separated a small ocean separated from the main ocean okay it's like this part this part is the this part is our main ocean this okay and this is this part this part of the ocean is what barred ocean and this is the this may be a sandbar okay this part is restricting the flow of water from the main ocean to that of the barred ocean i will discuss how salinity contrast develop and layering develops in the barred ocean so what happens is let me add another slide here so yeah Razor. Okay. So I am drawing the ocean. This is our barred ocean. You guys draw it down. And this is the main ocean. let us consider the salinity of the main ocean as about 2.5 okay so during high tide what happens is water flows from this side to to the barred ocean side and water will enter so the uh, density of sorry salinity of water in the barred ocean will be 2.5 now this this region this region the barred ocean region gets water only during the phenomenon of high tides okay so when there is no high tide this water will remain constant and evaporation will take place evaporation will take place so what will happen is the amount of water will go down in the barren ocean due to evaporation amount of water will go down so what will happen is salinity will increase this point is clear to all of you why salinity is increasing due to decrease in amount of water No sir, please ATP voice is no. breaking down. No sir, okay. can you please explain it again? Yeah, what happens is like during high tides, during high tides, water from the main ocean enters into the barred ocean. Barred ocean is the ocean which is separated from the main ocean, and it receives waters from the main ocean only during the phenomenon of high tides. Otherwise, there will be no transfer of water from the main ocean to the barred ocean. So during high tide, water from this enters this. so the salinity of water in this will be 2.5 okay let's say it is a it, it is the density okay it it is 2.5 now what happens is evaporation takes place evaporation takes place so the amount of water will go down and salinity will increase salinity or say density they are both related to each other so if salinity will go up then density will also go up now salinity and density is increasing with decrease in amount of water so we can uh, write like this concentration concentration of salt okay oblique density can be given as amount of salt amount of salt divided by volume of water so amount of salt in this region in the barred ocean region is constant salt is going nowhere okay salt cannot evaporate the salt will remains in the amount of salt will remains in but the volume of water is decreasing so the so in total the concentration of salt will increase because if the denominator is decreasing the result will increase if denominator is decreasing the result will increase if denominator is increasing the result will decrease if numerator is increasing the result will increase and if numerator is decreasing the result will increase okay so the concentration or salinity or density of the water goes up due to evaporation okay now another now again during another session of high tide like this high tide occurs uh, occurred during 
now in 2022 there is another phenomenon of high tide so again water will enter let us suppose the density went up to 2.7 from 2.5 to 2.7 okay due to decrease in the amount of water now again during the next phenomenon of high tide new water will enter this is the new water okay this is the new water that has entered now since it is being transferred from the main ocean its its uh, density will be 2.5 similar to that of the main ocean now we have developed two layers of waters in the barred ocean one having density of 2.7 another another of having density of 2.5 now it is clear how uh, layering has developed in the barred ocean Hello. Hello. Am I audible? You audible to you guys? Yes, yes sir. sir. This part is clear now. Like uh, how layering is developing in the barred ocean. How should I explain it once uh, again? Hello. If it is clear, then you can say yes also, so that I can proceed. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. So layering has developed. Now in the in the previous class we have discussed that if layering develops, if layering develops, then it prevents circulation. Okay. Prevents circulation of water in between the two layers. So circulation will take place. Only uh, circulation will be restricted in this layer. Okay, let me use another color. Circulation will be restricted in this layers. Okay, in the top layers. No circulation will uh, in, uh, will uh, will take into account both the layers. This type of circulation will not be possible. Okay, in which both the layers are involved. So what will happen is now layering has developed. Now if there is some sporadic storm, sporadic storm, S P O R A D I C some storm occurs so the storm will churn down the organic matter from the top region to the bottom region now since the bottom region has high salinity has high salinity no circulation it does not receives water does not receives oxygen from the top layer and the oxygen that was initially there was used by hydrotropic organism these things were explained in the previous class in the first part like you know, how uh, uh, in the thermal induced stratification so same process is going on this part will this part has uh, oxygen deficiency so when the storm will churn down the organic matter there this the the organic matter will be preserved in the downward layer this part is anoxic and this part is oxic oxic due to because it is in contact with the air contact with the air as well as photosynthesis is being carried out in this layer okay so the theory of this uh, thing is written here. You guys can write it down or either you can take a screenshot of this. So the first is like seawater enters the semi-restricted lagoons, gulfs or seas during high tides. As we have discussed, then what happens is uh, due to evaporation, water level decreases. The amount of water decreases and salinity thereby goes up. Okay. And the, thugs, the, the next point says that during next high tide, less dense water from the Mean oceans enters the barred ocean. So we will we will be having two layers of different density. Density difference will uh, prevent circulation of water. And in the shallower layer, we have photosynthesis. So we have oxygen. So we have organic matter. Okay, so we have abundant of organic matter. And in the deeper layer, we do not have uh, we do not have uh, photosynthesis because the sunlight cannot reach that uh, deeper layers. Okay, so the oxygen will be ultimately finished up in the bottom layer due to heterotrophic organisms. Now, if there is some sporadic storm, the storm can churn down the organic matter from the top layer to the bottom layer. Okay. This two layers, the storm can churn down the organic matter from the top layer to the bottom layer, and the organic matter will be preserved in the bottom layer. Okay. And the present day example of such phenomenon occurring is in Black Sea. Should I move on? There's a term. Yeah, yeah, see. There is a term asphyxiation. 
this is uh, this is uh, this is for death of organism death of organism due to lack of oxygen okay when the organisms are being churned down to the deeper layer like this this was the top layer having lot of oxygen this was the bottom layer photo deficient okay when the organism are churned down to the bottom layer okay in the bottom layer there is no oxygen so the organism will die out of lack of oxygen due to lack of oxygen and this process of uh, 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 death of organism due to lack of oxygen is called as asphyxiation so i am moving on the third part is continental shelf with upwelling so we will discuss how how in this uh, continental shelf with upwelling part how organic matter will be preserved in this region so we discussed in the like very first class like oxygen varies with depth concentration of oxygen varies with depth if this is the figure this is o2 and this is depth we studied that like oxygen varies like this okay oxygen is increasing in this direction and depth is increasing in this direction so with depth oxygen is decreasing write down oxygen decreases with depth oxygen decreases with depth okay so this is the figure of a continental shelf so in this uh, in this figure depth is increasing in this direction so we discussed that this part is anoxic and this is oxic so oxygen deficient region occurs at a depth occurs at a larger depth about like maybe 500 500 to 600 meter or maybe 800 2000 meter depending on the type of the ocean it varies with ocean to ocean okay so anoxic region occurs in this region so in continental shelf what happens is this is the anoxic region this is the anoxic region anoxic region and this is the word this is upwelling of nutrient rich matter these are nutrients so in the in the shallower part we have upwelling in some oceans in the shelf area so these are the nutrients accumulated in the shelf due to upwelling 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 occurs due to shallow sea water circulation okay so due to shallow sea water circulation we have we have a region rich in nutrients this is the region rich in nutrients and this is the oxygen oxygen deficient zone at a greater depth so what happens is during event of during event of increase in sea level if there is an increase in sea level due to reasons such as tectonic region and all what will happen is what will happen is this anox the water will go up the water will go up so if this is the surface of water if this is the surface of water this will also go up now this is the new surface of water so everything will go up okay except the nutrients because nutrients are settled in the shelf area this is the shelf area and nutrients are settled over this the water will go up so this anoxic region will also go up okay so what will happen is this anoxic region will shift to will shift to this region anoxic region goes up and shift to this region that that is it will cover up the nutrients now since the nutrients are covered by anoxic region nutrients are covered by anoxic region so what will happen is this nutrients will get preserved nutrients and organic matter will get preserved okay so this is the nutrient rich region so in nutrient rich and uh, nutrient rich region we will have abundant amount of organic matter so all the organic matter which is present here will get preserved due to the movement of the anoxic zone towards it due to rise in sea level understood any any doubt on this
No, sir. Okay, great. So the, this is the theory part of that. You can uh, you can take a screenshot of this, or or you can write like this phenomenon mostly occurs in the western coast of continents such as North America, South America, and Africa, as we discussed in the previous class. Like in the western part, this is the western part. It will occur nutrient rich up upwelling will occur in the western part. In this part. And uh, in the Africa part, this is Africa. In the western part of Africa, in the self regions. Okay, so in this regions, nutrient rich upwelling takes place. So next point is, the western coast of this continents have high productivity of organic matter because of upwelling of water rich nutrients and phosphates. So due to a lot of nutrients, organic matter will be, organic matter will be abundant. Now. Oxygen deficient region occurs between a depth of 200 to 1500 meter. Okay, due to variation of oxygen with depth. This is the figure for variation of oxygen with depth. This is O2 and this is depth. Okay. Now what happens is the fourth point is that due to rise in sea level, due to rise in sea level, maybe due to global rise in temperature or maybe due to tectonism, sea level can rise due to many reasons. Like sea level can rise due to many regions due to tectonism sea level can rise or due to rise in temperature sea level can rise so the anoxic zone moves up anoxic zone moves up and extends across the continental shelf where the organic matter and the nutrients were present so since the organ since now the anoxic zone has covered the organic matter and all so they will get preserved okay and the present day example of that is Present example of that is Phosphoria formation and Chattanooga wood, wood food cells. Moving on. The fourth point is deposition in anoxic basin. Write down. So the condition today is most of the oceans today, most of the oceans today are well oxygenated. Okay. So there is no lack of oxygen in today's oceans. Like the top layer is always well oxygenated. But like in the past, what happened is deep water circulation was restricted. Okay, and like mainly during the this event occurs mainly during the Mesozoic period. Mesozoic period. Yeah, most modern oceans are well oxygenated. Okay, and deep water circulation is caused by density currents, whereas cold water flow beneath the warmer low latitude water. Okay, so deep water circulation were not there in the past periods mainly during the mesozoics and there were no polar ice cap as we are having today in the north pole and the south pole okay so in the mesozoic era most of the oceans were anoxic like there were no oxygen okay so uh, if there is no oxygen then whatever will deposit there will get preserved okay so a lot of preservation occurred in that way and this is the reason why we find a lot of lot of oil and gas source rock of mesozoic age okay so this is a simple figure there is no process involved in this it is a, it is a anoxic basin in which deposition is taking place and whatever is getting deposited is will be preserved because the ocean is anoxic And another point you guys write down is yeah, this one. Like eighty five percent of the world's soil are restricted to late Jurassic to early Cretaceous rock formation. And as discussed earlier, like we have no present day example of an oxic oceanic basin. Then,
Okay, this part is clear. Or anybody is having any doubt? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. I am explaining a bit again. Like if uh, this is present day. Sir. Yeah. Hi. आपने बोला था वो न्यूट्रिएंट मन जो है वो सेटल डाउन करते हो कि वो कैसे सेल्फ लिचर सेटल डाउन करते हैं और कैसे वो एनोक्सिक जो वाटर से राइस करते हैं ये उसको समझ ठीक से समझ नहीं आया अच्छा ठीक है देखते हैं फिर से अब प्रेजेंट डे ओसिन में क्या है प्रेजेंट डे ओसिन में देखो नीचे नीचे जा रहे हैं तो हमारा क्या हो रहा है ऑक्सीजन ऑक्सीजन विल डिक्रीज and what happened in uh, what happens in present day ocean is that like there is shallow water circulation okay as well as there is deep water circulations as well as there are some circulations that involves both the shallow water as well as the deep water so in present day oxygen is redistributed oxygen is redistributed between between all the layers or say all the depths of the ocean so there is no deficiency of oxygen even in the deeper layers in present day but this was not the case in past this was not the case in past at past what happened is if this is the if this is this is the shallower layer and these are the deeper layers so circulations were restricted to shallower layers okay deep water circulations deep water circulations were absent in past environment or say in the age of mesozoic so in mesozoic what happened is deep water circulation was absent so oxygen is mainly restricted to shallow areas na due to photosynthesis and due to contact of atmosphere but like this this region will get oxygen only from the shallower layer if the if, if due to circulation but if there is no circulation to the deeper water layer so this layer is deficient is deficient of oxygen now organism are present in this zone okay organic matter is present in this zone and uh, and now if this organic matter is churned down to the deeper layer due to some sudden activity due to some sudden storm then they will get preserved in the anoxic basin in the anoxic basin at the deeper layers so this is how preservation will take place but this is not the scenario in present day what what happens is in present days if, uh, the deeper layers as well as the shallower layer have are rich in oxygen so even if the organic matter from the shallower layers gets churned down to the deeper layer they will not be preserved because the deeper layer is also rich in oxygen nowadays in present environment okay got it yes sir yeah okay Okay, moving on then. <coughs> moving on. Uh, write down some important points. Like in terrestrial environment, what happens is organic productivity increases with increase in humidity. Okay, humidity means H two O. H two O in air. H two O, or you can say vapor. Like organic productivity will increase with increase in water and sunlight in terrestrial environment. and organic productivity increases from from the poles towards the equator and that's why like we are having a lot of organic rich region organic rich region in in the equator side like in this regions and a polar belt here two polar belts here but like we do not have organic productive high organic productivity in this polar regions due to cold environment okay and large scale preservation of organic matter is not possible in upland areas like why we don't have uh, why we don't have large on land oil fields why we don't have a large on land on land oil fields the reason is that like in on land oil fields there is no basin no basin lack of basin lack of basin for deposition in land area what happens is there is lack of basin for deposition and like for for like for formation of oil the necessary condition is accumulation of organic matter if there is no accumulation 
so preservation will be difficult and formation of oil will be further more difficult so so for uh, for the occurrence of an online oil patient there must be a basin okay and since uh, in uh, in land areas we lack basins so we don't have lot of oil fields in the land areas write down this points Then with this, okay, moving on. So write down evolution of organic matter. So the organic matter that was preserved evolves in three stages. First is the diagenesis, second is catagenesis, and third is metagenesis. Firstly, we will be discussing about uh, diagenesis in detail okay so diagenesis in involves biochemical degradation biochemical degradation means the degradation by biological matters like for example bacteria and all and then polycondensation and then insolubilization of organic matter and uh, diagenesis during diagenesis the organic matter converts from organic matter to a, to simple organic matter from simple organic matter to kerogen and diagenesis is restricted up to a depth of 800 meter or like if it extend then it will extend uh, up to a maximum of 1 km okay catagenesis involves thermal degradation of kerogen like temperature will act thermal means like there will be role of temperature and in the catagenesis process the kerogen will convert to oil and oil will convert to gas and carbon residue that is kerogen will convert to oil due to temperature and oil will convert to oil mein agar temperature dalenge the if oil is subjected to temperature then it will convert to gas okay or if oil plus minus plus minus gas is subjected to temperature if it if they will burn down then will they will turn into carbon residue that is carbon dioxide carbon residue okay and catagenesis is restricted to a depth of 8000 meter or if it extend then it will extend up to a maximum of 10000 meter further we have metagenesis in metagenesis carbonization of oil and gas takes place carbon carbonization means like everything will escape except carbon like if we have hydrocarbon compound we have many 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 elements like cho s p in hydrocarbon we have this elements hydrocarbons we have this element but when this hydrocarbon is subjected to metagenesis metagenesis all this element will escape hydrogen will escape out oxygen will escape out sulfur will escape out phosphate will escape out all other elements will escape out except carbon so uh, during metagenesis we will get only carbon residue that is c nascent carbon okay and the carbon content goes up to 91% and in metagenesis we can say coal is formed coal contains only carbon and uh, metagenesis is restricted up to a depth of 10000 meter so what happens is firstly we have a lot of lot of element carbon hydrogen oxygen sulfur phosphorus okay and during diagenesis some of the oxygen will disappear during diagenesis some of the oxygen will disappear during further processes other other elements such as hydrogen it is will disappear and ultimately what will happen is since this 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 elements are escaping 
the percentage of carbon will go up okay so like what how can we calculate the percentage of carbon percentage of carbon is amount of carbon let me write it here percentage of carbon percentage is of carbon is equal to amount of carbon divided by total amount total amount of all other elements all other elements into 100 percent now if the elements are escaping the so denominator will decrease and as we dis as we have discussed earlier if denominator will decrease the result will increase so the carbon content goes up during metagenesis any question in this in this slide no sir. You, yeah okay so this is a flow chart how the organic matter evolves from how the organic matter evolves from simple organic matter to kerogen okay so you guys draw this uh, chart firstly we have protein protein polysaccharides this is these are formed from photosynthesis okay like we discussed now like co2 plus s2 gives uh, glucose here okay so this this has many forms like full polysaccharides and all polysaccharide starch okay so pol protein polysaccharides are formed during photosynthesis now during biochemical degradation biochemical degradation uh, acts on the uh, organic matter or say the protein polysaccharide then it converts into amino acids and sugars and if the amino acid and sugar is preserved okay then polymerization takes place polymerization means like more molecules will join up together like if this is co2 then what polymerization will mean that more of more co2 will bond up together okay so a lot of amino acids bonds up together if they are preserved and then and then they if they are preserved and then polymerization and condensation converts the amino acids amino acids and sugars into fulvic acid humic acid and humin okay and these are further converted into kerogen so like the humin part like humin part the humin is also called as kerogen okay fulvic acid fulvic acid fulvic acid converts into humic acid and humic acid converts into humin now like what happens is uh, the we discuss that protein polysaccharide converts is is degraded by microorganism it converts into amino acids okay and uh, this was the process of formation of kerogens but but if the amino acids but if the amino acid is used up by microorganism is used up by microorganism to build up their cells then it and then it has again entered the biological cycle the, the this protein polysaccharides this is in the biological cycle okay so if if it is eaten by any other organism the amino acid is eaten by any other organism for building up their cell this has again entered the biological cycle and this process will go on like this again it will it will form poly protein polysaccharide and then biochemical degradation then amino acid but if the amino acid and sugar is used by microorganism to produce energy okay mitochondria mitochondria is a cell which produces organ uh, energy in organism so if it is used to produce energy then the organic matter like for say the protein polysaccharide or the amino acid and sugar converts into co2 and s2 c6h12o6 if this is used to extract energy then it will convert into co2 plus h2o plus energy okay so this uh, this reaction is irreversible sorry reversible like for example during photosynthesis what happens is we add co2 plus h2o and we give up some energy like we give up uh, sunlight then we get glucose okay but when we 
use glucose for energy what happens is it is taken by organism okay living organism then it produces co2 h2o plus energy or you can say h nu okay energy is produced like both the forward and backward reaction is possible in the forward reaction we uh, use energy to form glucose and in the backward reaction energy is produced during the decay of glucose okay and uh, uh, the, like we discuss the type of organic matter like we discuss various types of organic matter like uh, protein lipid lignin so this was the fate in this in the in this path we discuss the fate of protein polysaccharide like what will happen to protein polysaccharide now in this path we will discuss what will happen to lipid and hydrocarbon so lipid and hydrocarbon do not require much of alteration by microorganism and all if they are preserved they get converted into hydrocarbon okay because they are already fat lipid is found in lipid in is found in animal animal fat so they are already in the form of hydrocarbon so if they are preserved they converts into hydrocarbon and if if that is also preserved then it converts into geochemical fossil okay if it is not if if it is not preserved then it converts into free hydrocarbon and if it is preserved then it will convert into human and all okay like if not preserved means not preserved means oxygen will act up in this direction let me use another color yeah in this direction if the lipid and hydrocarbon is not preserved it means like oxygen will act up on it act on it and hydrocarbon will be produced like free hydrocarbon it will be released it up in the atmosphere and then geochemical fossil will form geochemical fossil will contain only carbon and like few elements like but they will be not in much amount and if it is preserved then it will convert into fulvic acid humic acid and human and ultimately it will get convert into kerogene so this whole process is called as diagenesis any question in this no sir okay you guys have drawn this yes sir okay yes sir so write down few points about diagenesis the first is organic matter is converted into kerogen during the process of diagenesis like this is an this can be a question in exam like in which process uh, organic matter is converted into diagenesis and options can be diagenesis metagenesis and catagenesis so you will have to take the diagenesis in diagenesis we get two things either kerogen or geochemical fossil in the final product final product of diagenesis is to think kerogen and geochemical fossil geochemical fossil how do we get that by decay of lipids okay and diagenesis is restricted up to a depth of uh, 800 meter or say 1 km for the like methane is produced during diagenesis and that methane is called as Uh, diagenetic methane like for example methane can be methane can be produced both ways like both uh, both during diagenesis as well as during catagenesis methane is produced in both processes if it is produced during diagenesis it, it will be called as diagenetic methane and if it is produced during catagenesis it will be called as catagenetic methane it is genetic methane or simple methane okay methane can be produced in both but other hydrocarbon cannot be produced in uh, diagenesis like for the hydrocarbons such as c2h6 c3h8 this cannot cannot be produced during diagenesis write it down okay and 
the next point is diagenesis occurs in shallow subsurface temperature okay at normal temperature and pressure diagenesis includes both biogenic decay as well as abiogenic reaction abiogenic means when oxygen is less or absent okay and what changes occurs during diagenesis methane that is ch4 carbon dioxide and water will be removed from the organic matter leaving behind complex hydrogen means like only carbon and nitrogen will be left behind and other things like co2 methane and water will escape up from the organic matter o2 will decrease due to elimination of c double bond o and oxygen by carbon ratio decreases whereas h by c ratio remains constant so the explanation for this is we discuss that as to a as to a gets removed gets removed or escapes escapes out okay water will escape out during diagenesis so if water is escaping out oxygen is in uh, oxygen is there in water molecule so oxygen will decrease oxygen will decrease as well as uh, the hydrocarbon contains c double c double bond o that is ketones so these bonds are also eliminated during diagenesis and due to this two processes due to elimination of water as well as due to elimination of c double bond o the oxygen content of the organic matter decreases whereas the carbon remains constant okay due to carbon remaining constant a lot of carbon is not eliminated like here it is written that co2 is also eliminated but this co2 is in very less amount because like we are not burning the matter na? co2 will co2 will move up when we will burn the organic matter burn the organic matter and for burning the organic matter takes place when temperature is very high and temperature is very high during catagenesis and metagenesis okay during diagenesis temperature is temperature is normal like it is here written here at normal temperature so the carbon dioxide that is emitted during diagenesis is in very small amount so carbon remains more or less constant during diagenesis as a result of which h by c remains constant because no less amount of hydrogen and no carbon is being eliminated whereas oxygen by carbon ratio decreases because a lot of oxygen is being eliminated this part is clear sir how yeah. to hydrogen by carbon ratio remains unchanged hydrogen by carbon ratio remains unchanged because like we discussed in the in the previous point like h2o is also being released okay h2o is also being released as well as co2 is also being released but these are in small amount okay so what will happen is if there is a decrease in uh, hydrogen by 2 g carbon is also decreasing by 2 g so both of them are decreasing so the ratio will remain constant getting na hydrogen is being eliminated is being eliminated as h2o and carbon is being eliminated as carbon dioxide both are decreasing okay both hydrogen and carbon are decreasing so the ratio will same, remain same na for example if hydrogen previously was 2 and carbon previously was 2 so the ratio was 1 now hydrogen is 1 carbon is also 1 so the ratio is again 1 so the ratio is remaining constant na with decrease in hydrogen and carbon yes okay any question okay moving on then yeah write down diagenesis of organic matter occur in three stages we like we discuss all the process of diagenesis na like firstly there is organic matter and it, then we have biochemical degradation of organic matter then the bio, then the organic matter converts into amino acids amino acids and sugars 
then it is converted into fulvic acid fa humic acid and humin and then it is converted into kerogen so what are the process that are acting in during during this whole process we encountered firstly biochemical degradation so firstly we will discuss biochemical degradation then we discussed polycondensation we have polycondensation in this step okay the amino acid and sugar polycondense to form this humic acid and fulvic acid so we have the second uh, process as polycondensation and then insoluble adhesion like from from this stage to this stage like from humic acid fulvic acid and humin to kerogen in this stage we we have the process that is acting is called as insolubilization and what happens in insolubilization is the organic matter becomes more and more insoluble okay got it like where this three processes are acting during the digenesis cycle yes sir So write it down. I'm waiting for a minute. This will occur when organic matter is being converted into amino acid. This will occur when amino acid is being converted into humic acid, fulvic acid, or Humin and insoluble acid occurs when humic acid, fulvic acid, and humin gets converted into kerogen. Okay, moving on. So, biochemical degradation, the first process. So, what happens in biochemical degradation is like the sediments are rich in organic matter and all. Like, okay, something is missing here. I think. So, biochemical degradation occurs. below the surface of the earth all the processes that we are discussing all diagenetic processes all diagenetic process occurs below the surface of the earth noted down so first point says that the young sediments are rich in organic matter young sediments means like they are recent they are produced recently they are not much old so these are rich in organic matter organisms living organisms water and minerals so inside the sediments inside the sediments means inside the surface of the earth photosynthesis photosynthesis cannot be carried out due to absence of sunlight because sunlight cannot penetrate the surface of the earth okay this cannot occur sunlight cannot go down the surface of the earth so photosynthesis cannot occur so this microorganisms which are below the surface of the earth they will feed upon the organic matter organic matter present below the sediment na because they are deposited below the sediment and there is no sunlight here so whatever organism are present here they are not photosynthetic all organism that are present below the surface of the earth are heterotrophic that they that they feed on other organism so they will use up the organic matter na no? therefore the organ microorganism that live within the sediment will feed on the organic matter to convert uh, to organic matter like for example we discussed in the cycle or uh, diagenetic cycle that the microorganism can use the organic matter for two things okay for producing energy 
for producing energy if it is used for producing energy then it converts into carbon dioxide and water and if it is used for building cells if it is used for building cells then it then the cycle reinters reinters the biological cycle that is the organic matter reinters the biological cycle okay is if it is used for building cells then the cells will die okay cells will die and then it will again become organic matter then it will again go below the sediments and it and now we will see whether it is now again being uh, used up by microorganism for building for use for energy or for making cells okay so if it is used for making cells it will reinter the biological cycle and if it is used for making energy it will convert to carbon dioxide and hydrogen and if it is preserved if it is not attacked by microorganism then it will convert into kerogen okay no microorganism if they, if they are not attacked by microorganism then they will convert into kerogen okay so after feeding on the organic matter two types of processes act first is respiration and second is fermentation both these processes produces energy respiration occurs in oxic condition means when there is o2 and fermentation occurs in anoxic condition when there is no o2 okay so you guys write uh, write down the things in the in the slide that is visible to you any questions in this slide no sir then no micro yeah sir, no I... micro organism is converted to kerogen this part this repeat okay so i said what i said here is like there are three fate of the um, uh, organic matter let me uh, let me bring up another slide here okay so there are three types of fate of organic matter firstly the organic matter can be used up by microorganism for building cells if this is the condition then the organic matter will reenter the biological cycle reenter the biological cycle na because cell is in the words cell is present where cell is cell is present in a biological organism in a living organism so it it has again entered the biological cycle that is the organic matter has again entered the biological cycle other fate can be the organic matter is used by microorganism to generate energy if this is the condition then the organic matter will convert into h2o and co2 as we discussed earlier like physics h2lo6 if it is used to generate energy then it will produce co2 h2o plus energy okay and the third fate can be the organic matter is not attacked by microorganism that is it is preserved if it is preserved then it will convert into amino acid if it is again preserved then it will convert into humic acid fulvic acid and humin if it is again preserved then it is it will convert into kerogen so preservation is required in all stages clear yes sir okay so draw this draw this flow chart for the fate of organic matter fate of organic matter
डन मूविंग ऑन सो वी आर वी आर हियर सो एनी क्वेश्चन इन द स्लाइड बायोकेमिकल डिग्रेडेशन ओके सो नाउ वी विल डिस्कस बायोकेमिकल डिग्रेडेशन बायोकेमिकल डिग्रेडेशन इन ऑक्सीडाइजिंग और से एरोबिक और से ओपन से एनवायरमेंट ओके हाउ लाइक द हाउ द ऑर्गेनिक मैटर विल डिग्रेड इन ऑक्सीडाइजिंग एरोबिक एंड ओपन से एनवायरमेंट ओके so the organic matter deposited in porous sediments are destroyed by the action of bacteria okay water with dissolved oxygen enters the porous sediments and this dissolved oxygen is used up by microorganisms during respiration after feeding on the organic matter and the third point says that the microbiota means the microorganisms converts the organic matter to carbon dioxide and h2o during respiration and all so what uh, what is being explained here is if this is the condition this is the surface of the earth surface of earth and these are porous sediments organ like the first point says that organic matter is deposit is being deposited in porous sediments so these are the porous sediments and this are pores okay the blue colored blue colored region that that is the region the region uh, excluding the circles okay these are the pores so organic matter are deposited here let uh, let let us show organic matter by black color or say brown color so these are the organic matter deposited okay in the pores in the porous sediments so what will happen is we have what we have here in the atmosphere we have oxygen in the atmosphere we have water in the atmosphere we have lot of rivers in the surface of the earth okay so the water and the oxygen from the atmosphere will enter this porous sediments okay will enter this porous sediment and will attack the organic matter the organic matter can be attacked by oxygen as well as as well as water because the reason is the reason is that the sediments are porous so that the oxygen and water from the surface of the earth or above the surface of the earth can enters the pores of the sediments and if they can enter the pores of the sediment they can decay the organic matter they can decay the organic matter present in the sediment and as a result of which organic matter will not be preserved organic matter will not be preserved in porous sediments write it down this is a very important step and this like this has very uh, like this is very significant in petroleum geology organic matter will not be preserved in porous sediment and due to this reason and due to this reason source rock good source rock are found by rock rock having less porosity source rock means rock having organic matter that have the potential to generate hydrocarbon so good source rock is which rock the rock having less porosity that is shale okay like sandstone we all know that sandstone has a, a lot of porosity due to greater grain size due to greater grain size it have a lot of porosity and hence it is not a not a good source rock not a good source rock sandstone whereas shale is shale is a good source rock in sandstone since sandstone is porous oxygen and water can enter the sandstone and can decay of the organic matter that is deposited in the pores okay so draw the figures and write down the things written on the slide
Any question in this slide? Hello? No, sir. Okay. Sir? Yeah, hi. आपने बोला तो बूट सोर्स रॉक होने के लिए लेस पोरोसिटी तो लेस पोरोसिटी में पोर्ट स्पेस तो कम है ना सॉरी 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 लाइक यूज दैट पार्मिबिलिटी सेल का तो पार्मिबिलिटी कम है पोर्ट स्पेस तो ज्यादा है और सैंडस्टोन का तो पार्मिबिलिटी ज्यादा है इसलिए बूट सोर्स रॉक नहीं है या 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 गॉड लाइक आई हैव यूज द टर्म पोरोसिटी लाइक आई एम एक्सप्लेनिंग इन द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड This is done, na? So where were we? Yeah, we were here. So adding a new slide. Wait a minute. Yeah. Okay. So what what I said is, uh, to be a good source rock. To be a good source rock. you first need to have porosity okay and if you are do not have porosity you cannot store if you do not have porosity you cannot store or accumulate organic matter okay so firstly to be a good source rock you need to have high porosity and this is i am talking about sediment okay like before compaction and all before compaction and all the the sediment should have high porosity so that they can so that they can uh, take in, uh, take into organic matter into into their pores okay but after the rocks are deposited after the rocks are compacted they should have after the formation of rock like you can say this figure as before formation before formation before formation of rock you need to have high porosity so that you can accumulate a lot of organic matter within you okay but after formation of rock after formation of rock you need to have low porosity as well as low permeability this is after the formation of rock if the rock has formed and the rock is containing both both the sediment grain plus the organic matter after the formation of the rock you need to have low porosity as well as low permeability okay so so what happens with sail is it has high porosity when it is in the form of sediments not in the form of rock when it is in the form of rock like say when sail is in the form of rock it has very low porosity but when it when it is in the form of sediments like unconsolidated clay unconsolidated clay okay or fine sand say when it is in the form of unconsolidated clay or fine sand that is when it is not in the form of rock it has very high porosity so that it has a lot of organic matter but after the formation after the formation of shale that is after consolidation it should have low porosity so that nothing can enter it and as well as low permeability so that again nothing can enter it nothing can percolate through it okay 
and what is the case with sandstone the case with sandstone is it has a the grain size are larger in this so before before means before formation of the rock unconsolidated sand unconsolidated unconsolidated sand unconsolidated sand have high high porosity so lot of organic matter can remain here okay lot of organic matter can deposit in the sandstone because it has high porosity but after the formation of rock after the formation of rock it has high porosity again as well as high permeability high porosity as well as high permeability due to large grain size large grain size so water and o2 will enter and will destroy the organic matter so the condition is that uh, so the condition is that after consolidation after consolidation or say after rock has formed it should have low porosity as well as low permeability got it any confusion in the slide hello you you guys are listening or not yes sir yeah any confusion in the slide no okay so i am ending today's lecture here only like i am waiting for one one or two minutes like if if anybody has any question you can ask okay then if nobody has any questions then bye sir a pdf to mil jayega na yeah yeah bolo kya pdf ye ppt mane to mil jayega na ah uh, i don't know about it ye to puchna padega like i will i will send to send to nirakar sir like if if he will provide you then एक्चुअली इतने तो लिखा पॉसिबल नहीं है ना इसलिए पूछा यू गाइस यू गाइस कैन टेक स्क्रीनशॉट व्हाइल स्टडीइंग ओके बट आई विल आई विल रेकमेंड हिम टू सेंड यू द पीपीटीज ओके सो दे कैन बी सेंड अस वीडियोस ऑल लेक्चर्स या दे दे विल बी अपलोडिंग द वीडियो लेक्चर्स they will be uploading the video video lectures and the like uh, maybe in the geodestination app yeah okay thank you